Okay, hello friends. Once again, I so welcome you to another video on how to compute singular value decomposition. In this video, we'll be looking at example two. How can we work on a matrix that is not a square matrix? So let's look into it. So we have this matrix A here, which is what three by two. And then we are to find our U sigma and v matrices so we first of all have our matrix a here the transpose can be seen here and then we have the a transpose a to be this two by two matrix here from there we find our determinant how to find a determinant of that matrix from the theorem of calhermity and then we obtain equation three, which equation three is the character characteristics polynomial from the matrix that we have seen. And then we, when it comes to equation four, we equate it to zero to give us our similar values, which is what five and then six. So from there we, from here we we to find the Similar values, we find the square root of, of the lambdas, and then as we have seen here, that's 7 and 8. So then, to find our sigma, the singular values that we have obtained, we, we place them in the diagonals as we have seen here, and then we have two of them, which are supposed to give us 2 by 2, but the z have to take the form of the original matrix. So after after writing the two by two, then we pattern it with what zero. A row with a zero. That's pretty. That's pretty pretty nice. So from there we then want to look at how can we find our v matrix. Now we have seen the sigma matrix, and then from from a transpose a. A transpose A, as we have seen here, we deduce it, and then eventually we happen to get what V sigma square V transpose, and uh, we consider our sigma square to be the same as what D. That's what the diagonal matrix. So from <clears throat> from this one equation fourteen, we already happen to see this one. So we then go ahead to find. So from here, we, we have seen this equation before. So then we consider the case where we have our lambda be equal to 6. And then if we have the lambda be equal to 6, we'll be getting this 2 by 2 matrix. That's negative 1, 2, 2, minus 4. And then from here, we can see that row 2 is the scalar is a scalar multiple of row one. So doing the row reduction doing doing the row reduction we happens to we happens to have the row two running toward zero and then we have our equation we form an equation from the, these two rows such that it's equal to zero this one is equal to zero so we have two x replace them with some variables minus x plus 2y equal to 0 and then from here we can express this one as the same as minus x equal to minus 2 so if our y is equal to 1 then our x automatically be what will be the will, will automatically be what 2 so that's give rise to this eigenvector that we have seen here so from there, we look at the case where our lambda is equal to 1. And then we also, we, we happen to get this 2 by 2 matrix as well. We also perform the same row reduction. But from here, we, we do row swap, which we have our row 1, row 2, B row 1 here, and then row, two, row 1, B row 2 here. And then we can see that row 1 and row 2, this, yeah, the difference is just a scalar multiple. 
so row two runs to zero and then we pick variables that's x and then y from here and we equate to, equate it to zero so we can like i said like so from here we, from equation 20 we can rewrite this one as well 2x minus y so <coughs> if our y is minus 2 then we'll be getting our x to be equal to what 1 then we still in the business all the agent vectors that we have seen sorry that this should be an agent vector all the agent vectors the vector that we have seen we give them a nice matrix as matrix z and we normalize each columns of z matrix to get our, our matrix v so from there to get our u1 that's the first row the first column of u and the u2 to be the second column of u we then fall on this very matrix that we have seen here we will then fall on this equation as what so u1 have to do with what have something to do with what our s1 and v1 and u2 also have something to do with what our x2 that is the second singular value and then our v2 so let's see how to go about it so we have one minus what our singular value all divided one on this, our first singular value times our original matrix A times our V1, which gives us our U1. And then when you come to our U2, U2 we, is one on one, so there's no need to write it again. Then we happen to get our original matrix times our V2. And then if we doing the manipulation, we happen we're able to get our U2. So the question is, are we done? We are not done. So here what we intend to do is to find the remaining agent vector. Now we, our main aim is to find a U such that it is a three by three matrix. And then so to go about it, we have simple several ways to go about how to find this U3 vector. But I believe this method is so simple and I feel like to use to use this approach to, to come out with the U vector. So to go about it, we have our A transpose times our X, which our X is expressed in terms of small x, y, z. And then if you multiply, we'll be getting zero, zero here. So from here, we form an equation out of it, which is equation 29 and 30. And from 30, we can see that our X can be expressed as what S is equal to minus Z. So if our Z is negative one, then our X is going to be one. There is one free variable, so we, which it is our Z. So if our Z is, negative, is equal to negative one, then we'll be having our x to be equal to 1 and then from having obtained our x when it comes to 29 then we are getting our y to be equal to minus 2 that's what we have seen here so from here we then go ahead and normalize this u3 vector so and eventually we have we happen to have our u3 vector written here this is our u2 and this is our u1 vector so in conclusion our a matrix is not decomposed into what a u matrix our sigma matrix and then our v transpose matrix our v transpose here is, is the same as our v so i believe this video is um a straightforward simple well it's understandable and i would like you to just like comment and subscribe so thank you